plays the ground runs It's a hard crush Don't jump out of planes, Mark But I hear it's true You're so high up Got so much time Yeah, you think you do Calculations done, it's a long shot, but not my first or my last one. This old world only spins one way, and mathematics might just save the day. Gotta stay just ahead of what's catching up with me. May all the saints and the angels above steady up my breath inside my lungs. Calm my shaking hands. Lay your protection on my Folks, yeah, uh, that was Leona Berkey, and there's the sign. That is uh, her Shine Blue show. She's doing two shows. She usually does one show a year. Uh, I was talking to her. I tried to get on the show. Thanks, Leona. Here, I'm going to take this off. I'm going to show you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to show you our beautiful faces here, and I'll get rid of that. And, uh, and well, there we are. There we are. Hi, folks, and we got we got like a few watchers already. Jamie recently, we had Wayne Schneer is watching. Funny, he's sitting right over there. We got an audience, ladies and gentlemen. We have an audience tonight. Uh, so <laughs> it's a tight squeeze, but we managed. Yeah. And uh, we got the, we got the man of the hour. We got uh, here we are. We got uh, Kevin right. Fletcher. Let's hear it for him. Kevin Fletcher. Hey guys, where you going? Thanks for having me, Mom. I'm gonna turn this light up because we can't even see the lighters. The lighters now we can see it better on the camera. See, now it's better. There we go. Okay, so Leona Berkey, sweetheart. I love the album. I've been playing. I have the copy from the uh, from Nova Scotia Music Week. She gave me this special copy. Uh, I don't. I've, I think it was an advanced advanced. Uh, that's copy. Uh, the song Ground Rush made it to the Hall of Fame. She just recently got the Hall of Fame at the CI Week. Congratulations, Leona. <laughs> Woo! And her Shine Blue concert series. She's been doing them for years now. And April 30th, uh, Friday the 29th is Saturday, April 30th. She'll be uh, doing her shows this year. Like I said, I, I called her up. I was hoping to get on the show. She says, I'm, I get so many people calling. She says, I'm going to have to put out a second show on. And you did, and you still didn't get me. Next year, sweetheart, you're getting me on your show. But, man, she's got Joe Henry on this year. She's got... Yeah. Um, I heard she had everybody. Yeah, she, pretty much. She's got, uh, you saw the sign. That was only one of the nights. Uh, she's got a whole lot of, it's got a great show. We went last year. Leslie yeah. and I went last year. And I think we're going to try and catch, we're going to catch one nice. of the shows this year. So it's at the Carlton. And uh, it's a wonderful show. And it's uh, it's, it's to support uh, Autism Nova Scotia. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a, a cause that she holds near and dear to her heart. And she very proudly explains the challenges and the, and the, um, 
and the uh, and the victories and all the things associated with autism where her son is autistic mm -hmm. and she, on top of being an amazing mother and musician she's just an amazing ambassador for mm -hmm. autism nova scotia and so thanks leona for doing what you do and doing it so beautifully uh this album by the way is ground rush there's the album there it's a fantastic album um i didn't get to go through all the stats in there yet uh once again she like roger stone like there's a lot of familiar faces like you mm -hmm. know uh, farrington's on here i mean you know she's got man she's got everybody on here um tara spencer's makes an appearance on it um and she's got man uh 15 people perhaps on here mm -hmm. so uh yeah so so she, she dug deep making that happen thanks leona okay so anyway i had to get that out of the way because she's she's my pal yeah and that's my new thing i don't have the radio show anymore i, I later i had to give it a rest mm -hmm. and uh so that i could work on my music which some, maybe wayne you can have me on your show mm -hmm. and uh we'll celebrate my uh, my my album release with you mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen we are now celebrating kevin fletcher's new album All right. and it is called uh Shady <laughs> place studio yeah. which is actually his his pet right right it, yeah yeah so here's the album cover right i on. did the uh, spelling myself you did so, the spelling yourself yeah, or is that spelled wrong well it depends depends on who's spelling it right yeah uh, well it's a, it's a it's a pet name though isn't yeah it? i call it sade's place studio but it's sadie but yeah it's sadie's Sadie? or if, if, if it's tom bedell talking it's a uh, swaze or shade's yeah i don't know swaze yeah it's, i like that he might you know it's fancy I'm going to put your album because we're, we might actually hear a track from yeah. your album. You don't have to play them all live. There. I'm trying to get all high tech folks, except you're watching me lean over into this. We're mm. in my actual studio space, so it's not really TV land, but it's neat. It gets the job done. Mm. Um, let's uh, let's sit back and listen to one of you two. Cool. How do you say that, Wayne? Ah, sit back, relax, and there you go. Here you I'm, go. I'm ah, not trying sit to sit back and relax. I'm not trying to <laughs> steal your thunder, Wayne. I'm really. And by the way, folks, can you guys hear us okay? I think you can. Laura Miser's watching. Uh, we got a lot of people on. It. Shane Hayden. Uh, thanks, guys. Tony. Everybody. Uh, quit. I told Wayne. Uh, I gave him a beer before we started. I didn't want his voice to sound raspy if he did any talking. Okay. But let's, let's listen to it too. What about track number two? Must have been a dream. Must have been. A, is that the one that's on the radio now? No, that was uh, Rock and Roll Gypsy Rock and Soul. Rock and Roll Gypsy Soul. Yeah, 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 story about that one after. So uh, we're going to listen to uh, Must Have Been a Dream. And then after that, we're going to have a little chat about that. And we're going to get right into this cool. whole evening. Folks, a great night of music, live and recorded, right here at the Atlantic Indie Roundabout with me, your host, Maurice O'Coin. <laughs> What I seen, black magic on a bed of me. Out of one world into another. It must have been a dream. She had all of me so tight, never let me go once at night. Hurts the bed, yeah, it felt so right. I was asleep, I dreamt that we were together What I felt went on forever Taken away as I wake for day That's me playing that guitar, Mo. Yeah, that was me.
I felt divine love and connection. The whole world spun in the other direction. Things were just what they seemed. Folks, must have been a dream. Kevin Fletcher and uh, great tune. Thanks, brother. Nice artwork. I say it's Andy's studio. You can tell by the busyness. Yes. Did anybody that's ever been to his studio? Um, somebody's volume's up. Come on, Wayne. Turn the volume down. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, what's cool about a studio is you can get lost just looking around the room and forget sure the, and, and forget your cue. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I so I've, I've recorded several several projects. I'll, mm -hmm. We'll talk about that later on too. Yeah. Well, let's get right into the album. So you recorded it at Andy's studio. Yep. And uh, and uh, which is great. And there's like what? There's ten tracks on this. Yeah. Full well, full length. We live, uh, you know, the the far end of Truro. So uh, Andrew was really awesome. His uh, his girlfriend uh, has a Airbnb across the street. So uh, Andrew pulled out all the stops, put us up, you know, for the weekend uh, across the street. And so we did uh, two weekends up there, you know, for, set up Friday night. So spend uh, the whole weekend at it. Yeah, I got uh, everything, you know, went over some stuff yeah. Friday night, get everything sounded good. And then all day Saturday, all Let's day Sunday. Let's talk about the band. Yeah. Let's talk about the band um, on the album. Well, uh, Andrew Lambert on the bass and, he, you know, he was the recording engineer for the project. Uh, Dog McKay on the drums, and he I mean, he comes in and makes everything super super easy. Yeah, you know. Uh, how many albums has he been on now? What, a hundred? Well, we we've got, <laughs> we've got a uh, he knows how to do it. Uh, we've got the Oakley album at home on a record player. Yeah, you know. So uh, we that's cool. You know, yeah, he's a great drummer, a great drummer. Right on, Doug. Nice to see you're still doing it and yeah. recording. And a lot of a lot of the older guys, they just. You know, maybe uh, that, uh, some of the guys don't play as much as he used to, mm -hmm. but I think he plays more than he's oh, ever played. He, he's in, I think uh, he's busier he's now. In high than he's, demand, yeah, yeah, he's busier now than I think he's ever been. That's right. And yeah. uh, Ross Billard, I was, I, you know, I've heard of him and I've seen him out playing, but I never actually met him. And uh, Andrew uh, brought him in on the project, and he played the piano, the Hammond organ, mm -hmm. uh, wrote charts, yeah. uh, helped with arrangements. He did all the mixing and mastering in his studio, and. Uh, did some editing, like you know the the fancy dancey stuff. That yeah, once once it's written, whatever you, you do, and, and you and you give it to them. You say, "Here's my idea for a song." Yeah, and uh, just uh, hang on for the ride. Yeah, you know, and uh, and at the end of the day, you get yourself a record like this. And we're gonna go back to the beginning right now, folks. Uh, I met you mm -hmm. when you were just cutting your teeth. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know who you were. Somebody in the band did know you. Gordy, I think, was yeah, the guy. You knew Gordy. Gordy and yeah. um, and you were just Joey. you were just getting in. And yeah. I thought you were a wicked then. I said, man, he's just a kid, man. He's just getting going because I mean, a little older in the band, been yeah. going a long time. We were playing at the Whispering Winds Campground. That was my first time getting up with a band playing. Really? Was when eh? you guys called yeah. me, up. and yeah. I was like, going, "Who's this guy? This guy's wicked." Yeah. And uh, you were just getting going. I don't even think you were in a band or anything, no. man. No, uh, that, that was my first time. Uh, I don't even know if I... I think I had an electric guitar at home at that point, but I'd never really played in a band or, you know, yeah, with, with cool. a drummer or... So, I, you know, I had a big anxiety attack when you guys called me up to play. Ah! <laughs> and, uh, oh, I couldn't do that. Uh, uh, we wouldn't want to be responsible for that. I don't think we've ever given anybody anxiety. All either. the guys <laughs> in your band, they're uh, Joey King. Hi, TJ. Gordy. And yourself yeah. uh, have all gone out of your way to help me over the years. Oh, well, and, that's uh, the family. That's the village, right? We're, yeah. Wayne, there's that village thing again, right? right? That's the way we you roll. Know, that's the way a, here's to the village, folks. Right? Yeah. But a, what a good group of musicians you guys are. Mm. You know? Appreciate it. Right on. Cool. You know? 
And then on it goes. Uh, you got in. A, you had the your. Then you got yourself a steady gig. I imagine that's where you really got into it. Uh, you started playing around a bit, but then you had a was it a, almost a semi regular house gig at, at, at over in big leagues for quite a while. Well, uh, the night that you're talking about, where you guys called me up at Whisper and Winds, uh, new new Grant, the bass player, right, come over and he said, uh, "You got to go to my son's place tomorrow f for this jam." And go. Well, where's your son live? And it turns out it was down on Wise Road. And they, oh, he thought like you're his house. You thought yeah, was, I was like, you know, my son's place. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I started going down every Sunday. Uh, they had a jam. You could go sit in with the band, and that's where I met uh, all kinds of musicians. And uh, Mark Rapita at one point came to me and said, "We want to hire your band for the bike, biker da down dance." And I said, "Well, I don't have a band." And he said, "We well, got four months to get one." Really? So, wow! So he, you can kind of you can actually thank him. Well, I can thank you because that was you know that yeah. it just the way it went. Well, that's what I mean though. Uh, you made you made a you made an impression rather quickly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you just certainly did with me. I mean, I, I mean, here we are. Like, I'm almost uh, you know, it's like I'm looking at this going like you know, finally they finally got an album out. But you know what, dude? That was probably twenty years. Yeah. <laughs> Take one. Uh, I went to a. Uh, I was going to get a place in Stewiak. And I was all excited. They were having a uh, Whistler street party. So I go up and there it's, it's a street party. They had a wet t-shirt contest. <laughs> you were going around the crowd with the, the bullhorn. Yeah. You know? And I thought, wow, this, this town is awesome. Yeah. You know, this is going to be the hot spot. Yeah. I lived there for 10 years. Nothing ever happened again. <laughs> right? was, you killed the town. Yeah. But I, I you know, I thought it was going to be like this yeah. every weekend. And let me see your hands. You still got all ten digits? Oh yeah. I, this guy, this guy pounds nails. Right. He saws pieces of wood. He builds things yeah, for a living, thanks. basically. And uh, I know you worked with Craig Rude quite a bit. I, mm -hmm. You worked over the years. I mean, you both have your own yeah, thing. Yeah. But, but I've seen you Craig both on your hands and knees putting together a floor or something. There's two of the finest blues yeah. guitar players uh, in the in Eastern Canada, risking life and limb What's to make it, uh, to make a living and risking their fingers and everything that else. That camaraderie. In the yeah. musicianship. Um, Did you guys talk a lot of shop while you guys worked? Oh, together? yeah. Um, I met Craig through Gordy, and uh, Craig and I started playing blues. And I was going through a hard time, and Craig came out to one of my gigs, and he says, where are you working at? And I was like, actually, I lost my job today. And he said, well, why don't you come work for me on Monday? Wow. So uh, I worked for Craig on and off for a year or two, and yeah. lunchtime we would uh, draw out guitar scales and yeah write songs and he's, he's a monster player he's, yeah. he's on a few he's on a few of my songs yeah he's helped me a lot I, and i really always uh uh looked up to his guitar playing yeah and uh, you know make you play better i don't know how he does it he works so hard yeah he puts in so many hours when you run your own company right yeah uh, it cost me a guitar player uh, mm -hmm. john matheson had to leave my band uh, after when the pandemic started he got he put the pivot and he, he got he got so busy he had to give up guitar playing mm -hmm. and i'm um, I've never let him go and he's never quit yeah but i know he's too busy to do a gig right and it's really hard to, to do a day job especially a, a a labor intensive work like that especially if you're pouring cement and mm -hmm. stuff like that and then you got to go get together and you get hey tim feswick's on my producer hola hola tim we'll be talking about you in a little while too brother um so yeah so you know i like it. maybe what you about play play one of the tunes like that's on the album but i want you to play on the guitar show us your licks sure. and uh yeah we've got guitars coming and going here Woo! And by the way, folks, he bought a brand new, gorgeous American yeah. uh, American uh, uh, Stratocaster. I think it's the shiniest guitar I've ever seen you right. own. Yes, and I've had uh, the cheap knockoffs. And we're playing, and, and we're playing acoustics tonight anyway. But we'll 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 gear something like that up soon enough. Uh, and uh, there you go. So uh, look at that. Oh, does that sound sweet? So what are you tuned up to? How's that? What kind of tuning do we got here? Uh, open D. Open D. Yeah. Which one's going to our listeners how that one works? How do you do an open D? It's basically, um, it's a, if you strum it open, you're getting a D chord right. without touching it. How many, how many of the strings get retuned in that effect? So you're, uh, you've got three Ds, so you're going E is down to D, Right. A stays the same, then you've got another D. Which is A stays the same. Yep. And then your G goes down to an F sharp, B's down to an A, and then E down to a, to a D. Right. So what you end up with is a D chord. Is three Ds. Those are your roots. Yeah. You've got two A's, your fifth, and you've got the third of the chord right there. So you've only got three notes. And what it does is make it all line up in a straight line. 
for 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 slides. For slides, yeah. so I got my D. So after the show, you're gonna, I'm gonna you're gonna show me. I'm gonna tune up one. Yeah, tune, what, tune what, up what one of my guitars. Yeah, but and I think I'll sit around later on and maybe uh, this one isn't. Really like it. So uh, what are we gonna play? Get my mind right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, everybody that's watching online, you, you're obviously quite popular. I got one of the biggest. I got one of the biggest nights uh, on a live stream I've right. had in, in probably years. Uh, and uh, hey, the Deuce is watching too. Hi, Brian. How you doing? So uh, yeah, give it up for Kevin Fletcher, and right. uh, let's listen to some great, great blues. Thank you. That's awesome, man. Love you, brother. Good. Uh, that must be quite a trick, actually. Um, it must be a little bit of a trick, in, in fact. Uh, playing slide guitar on a guitar that you normally play normal, because you yeah. got to have the action raised higher so you yeah. don't so you don't fret out. Yeah, we're uh, uh, we're saving up now that we're getting our mind right. Uh, we're trying to put money towards. Uh, we're gonna get a Delbro at some point. Oh, really cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, Chris Ritchie just got one. He says he wants to learn how to play it. And speaking of Dobro, uh, I noticed Tim Feswick's on. He, he was on a few minutes ago. He may still be on here. He did some amazing Dobro work mm -hmm. on uh, on my album. And wait till you hear the latest one, uh, Getting Older Now. He's got some amazing Dobro mm -hmm. work on that as well. Uh, we were thinking getting a, a, a pedal steel player from Nashville. Mm. And after some careful consideration, because the opportunity was there, and it would be great to have some of the Nashville guys to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's set up for it. 
John Campbell, really, John. But it really wasn't necessary. It's just yeah. he's doing a session with these yeah. guys next week, and they would have been in the in you know yeah. in, in his in his posse. They, they don't have any John Campbell Johns down there. But no, they don't. They don't. The only one is right here in Dartmouth. But his but his but his um, his playing is just so good. And yeah. uh, I said, you know, let's just it, we, we'll figure that maybe another song. Yeah. Uh, he's he's he calls it the Beast, his Dobro. I was lucky. Uh, a buddy of mine loaned me a. Uh, a dobro uh i put on one one track on this album and uh, chris will get a nice picture of it on the uh, the cover right there on. So, but a dobro you got big heavy strings they're up high uh, that's right yeah. and, and as it was it tuned the same way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right. must be several other ways you can tune uh if you do i do uh open g tuning and open d tuning and then i'll use a capo to get right. some different yeah uh, one yeah. of the tricks TJ Myers is on tonight, or he was, and uh, mm -hmm. he showed me the trick about putting the capo like that, so you get your open tuning, wow. and, uh, but then when you play a full chord, he you're got, not, you're he not got you're forty not. fingers, TJ. And that's stuff, right. Like, okay, there you go. Yeah, yeah he's, <laughs> like, he's a he's a freak. Get, yeah, out, yeah, of yeah, yeah. get, out, of get out of here! Get out of here! Get out of here, TJ. Right on. <laughs> you know, <laughs> good one. Right on. Yeah. So that that uh, awesome. And uh, yeah, I noticed even Ken Tobias, David Judo. Look, watching from Tokyo. There you go. How you doing, David? He was on. Uh, he, we did a show, and it's interesting because of the twelve hour, the twelve hour change uh, time time difference. Right. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, what what are the one of the new tricks I've I've been doing? Um, one of the things I've been doing is I I, I got this uh, a twelve string guitar, and uh, TJ coming back to TJ again. Uh, he. He's, he has a he plays a twelve string. So does Paul Lamb. Uh, now I went on. I asked a few people in Nashville. They'll double up these strings, yeah. right? And you can buy you can buy an eight string uh, guitar. Uh, Martin makes one. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them make them now. The eight string acoustic, and it's got you, the, these. You know the, the two middle strings are doubled up. Yeah. And but I, they don't do that in Nova Scotia. Nope. Got to do things their own way. So Paul Lamb, TJ, and a host of other guys around here, mm -hmm. they just double up the small strings, the, right. the, the, the two little ones. And what I like about it is I like to play a song and. Avoid them. That's just a six string tie. You know, Bob yeah. Seeger. Yep. Seems I lost my way. Right? And now you gotta go. Mm. And now you get a twelve string. So it's Beautiful. been a lot of fun. And and the and the neck being very, very wide, um, with my fumbling amateurish fingers, Beautiful. I can get my licks in a little bit better. It took a little bit of work to get the, the wide neck thing yeah. going there, right? But uh no, that's cool, yeah. Um, but uh, I'm going to play one of my tunes in a few minutes here. But this is about you tonight, really. But uh, uh, usually when we're in the roundabout, we kind of pass sure. things yeah, back man. and forth. And uh, I'm going to I'm going to play a song that um, actually didn't I send this to you already? Which uh, I sent you a song the other day. Oh yes, okay. This isn't going on the album, as far as I know. It might, but it hasn't been recorded yep. yet. Uh, we're going to need to put a capo, or I am going to put a capo on the second fret. Some guitar players don't need to do that. You're down sing. a half step, are you? I'm down a half step, but I'm up two. But if you want to set up, let's, but, hey, I can work around your cake. I can yeah, work good, around. Well, we can, but yeah, but you bring out a harmonica too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, but you do wait, wait, just go up one more. Can you do it? Yeah, go up one more. There you go. Now this is another song that I wrote with my songwriting partner Randy, and. Uh, and uh, we uh, we write good we write good music. We're actually we we're sitting around the other day going, man, we're turning into songwriters. I said, yeah, we've been friends since we were in grade eight. We were in our first band together. Uh, we we've, we've both raised families, we stayed best friends throughout all the years. We've hung out, and it was only in the last five years that we realized that we're also terrific songwriters together. I don't mean to blow my own Is horn. Is that Chef Randy? We, right, yeah, and yeah, we right just on. we so so click that we never butt heads. Mm -hmm. um, he's a lyrical gangster. He doesn't really play guitar, so right off the bat, there's that there's, that doesn't the, those lines don't get blurred, mm -hmm. and um, but he also knows a good riff when he hears it, and he doesn't. And if he's yeah. in Reese, that sounds like shit. Yeah, I move on, and I, we no I no no that, egos uh, no egos or trance because we've never had an argument in our lives, and Kr it works. Krista, uh, you know, there's a lot of people in the past. That you're not comfortable to share your, the stuff you're working on and right. let your guard down, and uh, I blast ideas off of her all the time. Yeah. And uh, she's got a really good ear to go, uh, you know, maybe not. Kev, well, Wayne, but... you realize, you're, you know, that whenever I get a new song from Tim or if I'm working on a song, you're one of the people in my pipeline. You're one of the very first people I send a copy of to to check out because I, I respect your opinion. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's nice to have people. It's also, I think it's, it, 
if you're not a jealous person. Yeah, right. And if There's you're not, not for all of us out there. I mean, I'm not worried about playing a song for somebody to say, hey, what do you think of this? You know, and yeah. I want you to be critical. Yeah. But it's not like I'm worried about, oh, they're going to steal my ideas or yeah. anything like that. Like, I mean, I, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to, I, I, I want feedback from the people whose opinions I really respect. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, he has, a, he has a radio show he's been doing for, how about five years now? Mm -hmm. And maybe a hundred people or more have passed through your, mm -hmm. or hundreds maybe oh, by yeah. now. hundred years. And so, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, when I, when Wayne says, if, if Wayne says, Marisa, you can do better, I know I can do better. Or yeah. if, I, if, if it's really, really good, he's not just saying that to blow smoke up my ass. Yeah. You know, so anyway, this is the tune that uh, hasn't been recorded yet. So we're still, it hasn't even been properly arranged, but it will be. It's called Papa. Better put that guitar down. It needs no explanation. That's exactly what it's about. So. Don't even have an intro. Papa better put that, put that guitar down. My mama's going out the door and headed into town. Well, she ain't waiting till the moon and stars come shining down. Oh, Papa better put that, put that guitar down. Yeah, Daddy plays that old guitar morning, noon, and night. And we all love to sing along, but that don't make it right. Well, this old house won't pay to sell, but George need to do it. Oh, my papa just strums away, and mama's face in ruin. Oh, oh, oh. You'll find a lonely boy where snitches ain't around. Oh, Papa better put that, put that guitar down. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Fletcher. Oh, Papa better put that, put that guitar down Oh, Mama's going out the door and headed into town She'll get their tails a wagon when she's shooting whiskey down Oh, Papa better put that, put that guitar down Find somebody new if you don't come around. Oh, Papa better put that, put that guitar. Papa better put that, put that guitar. Papa better put that, put that guitar down. Put it down. Oh, put it down. Come on, Daddy. Put that guitar down. Come on, Dad, you know Mama's not gonna run into town. Don't let her go, man. Come on, you know the right thing to do. Yeah. I was playing and fading it out, obviously. Oh, yeah. I haven't come up with an ending for it yet. Well, I didn't realize we're both tuned down a half step. <laughs> yeah. This one too. Ah, yeah. Now you're thinking. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to fix this mic so the next time we play my guitar isn't so loud. Yeah. That's a little better there. Hey, Karen Mullen's watching. Mark Riley's watching. Awesome. How you doing, Mark? 
man, he's doing a lot of work. Man, I, there's another guy who goes to work in the daytime, does a job, and then he goes out and he's a rock star at night. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in a host of bands. He's got his own thing. And congratulations on the nomination. Uh, yeah, uh, right on. Excellent. Um, yeah. PM Blue, that's his album. It's, uh, he did it with Paul Bento, one of my dearest, dearest friends. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, Mark, you're doing great, man. Uh, the whole province is watching you. Yeah, Tyler's watching too. Cool. We got a great big audience on tonight, man. We better not blow this. We better have yeah. something good to talk about. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, how long did it take to? Uh, let's get the reverb off here. How long did it take for you guys to um, uh, to for you to put this album together? How long? How long was the process? Well, uh, I've been writing songs and home recording. You know, here. writing songs for a long time and yeah. uh, never had uh, the recording quality you know or right. the, or the confidence you know is putting together so i was lucky i had uh i've got a backlog of uh original songs to draw from and andrew uh was kind enough to loan himself you know his i'm losing my camera tonight for some reason keep talking we and, can hear you andrew uh you know uh loaned me some money to you know to put things together and equipment and so uh even like i said put once me up again man his, you're uh, talking the village right you know that's he, the thing uh we stayed at his girlfriend's airbnb you know for the sessions but we did two two full weekends you know yeah. friday saturday sunday um one everything was recorded live there's one song uh, stoned and blind where right. i uh i added a dobro at home you did it at home yeah okay we're gonna talk about that yeah. folks listen we got the we have a problem with the camera but you can we can hear you we, you guys can hear us so keep so you yeah because you said you did most of the track e everything's and, live yeah um so how long how long did that take you to wrap your head around home recording um uh, i had the help of the guys so it, you know it wasn't too bad right on uh the, the problem was that one actually that one dobro track uh i played about nine hundred thousand times i got locked in a right. loop i uh i stayed up yeah. you know 48 yeah. hours yeah. playing the same solo the same way i did last time and it's, uh okay we got a, we got a bad camera dude. yeah but uh the the problem uh well not the problem when you when you do your own recordings and you do yeah. your own production you can go down a rabbit hole oh i went down the rabbit hole oh, it is it? Like, but you're just, especially on your yep. first album right like it takes a uh, while for you not to go down rabbit holes right well and, uh, the they all had to talk me out of the you know put yeah. the, you know <laughs> yeah 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 and then i thought i was making it easier so i sent uh, ross uh 500 uh dobro tracks for the one. Oh yeah like you think you're helping him out yeah, for, right, for the comp mix yeah I, honest to god and then i'm getting the phone call like you know what's what the hell is, what, what are you doing what is this what is he, what's he doing you know and i haven't been to bed yet i've been recording dobro for three days yeah that's what happens man that's so, rock and roll yeah you know and the thing is there was a time when the only place you could record was in a was in a studio at yeah. you know premium race with the premium gear mm -hmm. and now like i said we all got this stuff now i got a full running studio here and it's like mm -hmm. maybe not be the, the highest tech of stuff but it gets the job done i'm comfortable in it well, and i learned i am something. one of a million million people on the planet that's got their own home studio yeah you know so the big new thing is record a track pass it around like ross probably does more stuff correspondently than he does in the room well the first delbro track that i played i'm sure that's the one that's you know the other oh absolutely the other 899 yeah. ones that i did yeah, yeah, you right. know yeah. i could have just you know had a meal and gone to sleep and that's right yeah. no you know yeah I, I just got a little I'm, we're gonna keep what i'm not gonna ruin the show because the camera shuts off once in a while i'm gonna keep I, i'll figure it out but uh it would happen though it would happen to us. yeah look it's happening right now i gotta just make a little change here yeah all right there we go try that i think we might have it now clink bang bop yeah the whole thing's hang on there we go they'll never believe you wayne <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't sound like the kevin i know no no never would do it right do, are you a jinx kind of guy there we go we're, we're, i think we think we got it now jinx or drinks yeah, well, he's yeah. definitely a drinks kind of guy i'm gonna have mine after i think actually mm. okay well the, uh yeah well that's really cool let's play another tune all off right. your album sure and we all we can play we'll play a track too um let's see we've got a great crowd tonight this is a, uh we had two sessions and uh between the two sessions i was sitting home and uh i just started playing 
this song came out and I ha I wrote the words down because you know you're That's in right. that creative zone and I thought uh, man this doesn't make any sense it's just a jibber jab right you're writing it down and I sat on it for a couple of days it's like you know what that that does really pertain to my life and what's going on right now so, right from what you know yeah right Pretend I don't need a defense. I can just be myself, let the troubles worry about themselves. I don't need to explain, I don't need to entertain. I know the ones who's truly on my side. Thanks, Mom. All I need is love in your eyes. All that matters is you by my side. We got each other, so we don't gotta worry about nothing. Life can't take it away. Lived and died a thousand times I've been a sword, been a shield, been a butterfly Metamorphosis, man, I tried Do my living before I die All I need is love in your eyes All that matters is you by my side got each other so we don't gotta worry about nothing life can't take it away no matter how hard it tries that's beautiful that's right good. on yeah. Yeah. yeah right on guys right on Right on. Cool. What's the uh, what's the, what would be uh, when you started writing? Um, how long? Like, what, like, what would be your first song you ever wrote? That's on that, that ended up on this record. Oh, okay. Is it the uh, first song you, you ever wrote, or is it the first song you, you made for the album? Thank you. For not, we don't gonna want, we don't want to go back to the first song no, I ever wrote. No, well, nobody really does. Right? <laughs> no, but, but I mean, I, you didn't. Write, you, but you didn't sit down in a week. It and was write summer this camp, album. and I was trying to get this girl to kiss me. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. Well, that, that probably didn't make the album anyway. No, it didn't. no, no. But how, okay, so a, 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 a span uh, of how many? Uh, what, 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 let's see. Um, like was it was it like matter of this is years is no, it months? Uh, okay, um, stoned and blind. Uh, that's a couple of years old. Uh, same with get my mind right. You know, I was trying to get it together, going through a rough time. Right. Uh, same with desire. I was going to counseling. A lot of people think it's about uh, a girl kind of, but it's really about me going to counseling. Right on. Um, a lot of songs have a double meaning. Part yeah. Of me. that's uh, supper. I, I warned you guys earlier. The uh, the opening song, hey hey hey. Uh, I had one verse that I thought was really cool and I had that for two or three years and then I was coming home from the pawn shop one day without a guitar but I had verse number two so verse number wow. two day hey, 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 that cost me a guitar wow. Uh, that's the blues man yeah right see folks this is this is you know we're thinking about the blues eh? rock that's roll, how the blues uh, goes right to stuff like that rock and roll gypsy soul uh i met krista out at uh pembroke music festival and we've been spending our summers out there we go to the the country the rock the blues yeah. you know the matt minglewood weekend and uh, i'm sitting home playing guitar and i got this cool lick i'm working on and i'm thinking about the jams and the you know the campfire time and something that I could play this summer coming up and uh, then I started thinking all the little stories of the fun times that Kristen and I've had and so there's uh, there's five verses to that song and each of the five verses are every word of it's 
you know, it's truth. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Know? And that's the thing. But I, 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 I'm not going to name names. Yeah. Uh, because that, that's not right. Yeah. But I, I've heard people write songs. And songs actually aren't that bad. Yeah. The problem is with you. Write a song about a place you've never been. Yeah, right. Or with something you've never done. Or yep. somebody you have never met. Yeah. You got to be really careful what you say mm -hmm. and how you and how you uh, yep. and how you I how find you that present even, because it's really easy to tell if you haven't been there. Even uh, even without writing the songs that you choose as an artist to play, you know yeah. that's it's something that, you know is really important. That uh, of all the songs in the world, have you traveled a lot? <laughs> I, I actually we were we were discussing that on the way down yeah. because I am quite an extensive traveler yeah because that I mean, that, that plays a lot in your song but we were worried about like if you add don't ask me where i've traveled to <laughs> okay well we never really discussed the things that weren't on the table yeah, tonight like, I'm gonna this is actually all. a little awkward because in all the years i've been doing live streaming since i started doing this yep. no one's ever said okay we're not going to talk about that no we can't yeah, i'm, a, <laughs> I'm just know. kidding but no seriously <laughs> hey mike for is watching how you doing mike haven't seen in a while and randy loved that though brilliant lyrics he says Thank and uh, Randy's a lyrical gangster. I mean, he's my mm -hmm. he's my side man. He's yeah. right on Randy. I mean, we've we've we're on, uh, we've pretty much written an album now. Yep. Uh, we've recorded three three of the songs we've written are now recorded. One has been released, uh, yep. and more to come, of course. Yep. But uh, and, but we haven't stopped. Are, are, yep. Do you find you're writing like it's? I mean, some guy. Well, you see, you're you're considerably younger than I am, and I've been writing my all of my adult life, but mm -hmm. not consistently. Yeah. And one of my favorite songs I ever wrote was This Old Town. It was a song about the yeah, homeless. I, and I wrote yep. that song many, many years ago. Mm -hmm. Many years before we recorded it, actually. And I was very proud of that song. Yep. But then I wrote other songs that just kind of filling up gaps and all that. And it wasn't until Randy and I decided to sit down and really start putting some thought and seriously and, we, and realizing that we could connect on, mm -hmm. on writing. We could make music. And we realized, you know what? This is the best song I ever wrote. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, like, I know guys my age whose best song they ever wrote was 40 years ago. Yeah. And they're out there making money off that song that they wrote 40 years ago that might have got them a gold record, mm -hmm. but they don't pr they don't produce new material like they used to do. And uh, here I am in the twilight of my career, and yeah. then we I think this is the best one. Now Randy awesome. has just had the lyrics are sitting over there. Uh, it's a wonderful song. We haven't even finished. We have the music. We have the lyrics. We haven't we haven't we haven't welded them together yet. And he always called me in tears, saying, "I think I wrote the best song I've ever yeah. written." And uh, it's so ex it's inspiring. I like, I hope little I hope I live long enough, really, to, to record all the songs that we're writing right now. You know, seriously. Right yeah. from the get go with songwriting, uh, <laughs> it was like I wrote that song that got me through, you know, that couple of days. That's right. Or that you know that, uh, and a lot of times you forget about them. You know, they they don't become relevant anymore. And through uh, a life of having music as a, a coping mechanism that's there for me when I need it. Uh, there's been that list of songs that I was able to hold on to. I was going, you know, this time next week, I wasn't like wanting to forget about that, uh, you know, how I felt about yeah. that breakup or that, that's you right. know, that, you know. Funny thing is, I'm glad you're talking about that because uh, the song that's on the radio right now, mm -hmm. that, that my song that's on the radio is a song I wrote many, many years ago, and I was kind of embarrassed mm -hmm. about the song. Not because it was, not because I was ashamed of it. Yeah. It's just that when I wrote the song, I was in a mindset. I don't know. I was. I was it's a different you. Whimsical. It wasn't. It was not. Yeah. It's not even. It's just a song about meeting your maker. Yeah. But you know, it's like it just seemed like well, it's charming. It's kind of quaint, but yeah. it's not really. I don't know. It's kind of personal. It's just kind of something I just threw together. And yeah. over the years, Gordy, he said, Maurice, that's your best song. I said, dude, what? I played it at his mother's funeral. Yeah. And I never played it live ever until, well, Tim hears it on my demo thing. He goes, Maurice, there's your, there's your song. I said, no way. Gordy said that. He says, well, Gordy's right. He said, so I hand on the song and he turned it into a work of art. Mm -hmm. And I still, I'm just getting to the point, I play it live often. Yep. I play it almost every night now. I'm just getting to the point where I'm comfortable playing it. Because I felt it was personal and awkward. Like I wanted to let it go or just let it, like leave it in the past sort of thing. Because it was very important when I wrote it and it very quickly became yeah, like a, like, a, like an ex-girlfriend or, yeah. or something like that. Uh, right? And it turned out that uh, it's a bonus, it's a lead off single off the album. Uh, I dedicated it to Shane Moore because mm -hmm. without Shane Moore, that wouldn't, the whole project wouldn't have started. And um, and here we are uh, recording a song that is the last song in the world I ever thought would turn into a, a song on a record. And like I said, sometimes those 
things that you write down that you, that don't mm -hmm. seem relevant three days from now, thirty years from now, it might be a, a number one. Hey, hit. You can help me with something like that there uh, down the road. I've got a yeah. You, you end up playing wakes and uh, celebrations yeah. of life and that, and yeah. uh, a lot of the older crowd. They all want the same songs, old rugged cross, and go rest high on the mountain, and um, amazing grace, amazing yeah, grace, yeah, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm not a religious guy, but uh, I, the, the song came out yeah. of me. Well, like spiritual, to, spiritual, to, to try to you give can, comfort to people in that time. You can be spiritual, and, Although, um, you know, not go to church, and you can still be very spiritual. Yeah, uh, and I got a, uh, about two verses that I think are really beautiful. And, uh, Don't could, throw them away. And I could use some help down the road to finish that song. Well, I guess that's a that's a that's a that's a yeah. it's a hint, is it? Yeah. I would love. I, I love co-writing. Yeah. Uh, that's a whole other subject. I've talked about it at at length on I don't know how many of my episodes of the Roundabout. Uh, co-writing I think makes the world go round. Yeah. I think co-writing gives the village credence. Mm -hmm. um, you what happens too when you co-write and you garner any kind of success? Uh, you're not the only one that shares in it now. Yeah. Now, you can say, no, I'll keep it for myself. I'll write it. I'll do it no. all myself. I do it. I do it. I do it. And if it's big, you yeah. make 100% of the of the, the money. You make 100% yeah. of the accolades and all that. But I like to share my success. I yeah. like to share. And, and also that, like, more people are. And then their friends are interested in it more. And so it's very, it's a very, very healthy. In Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, you don't have co-writers. You have teams of writing partners. Yeah. There'll be like a dozen people in the room. So if it's a million seller, well, everybody makes $900,000, you know, yeah. whatever. I, I, I'm good with that, yeah. you know, um, or, you know, whatever, 90, you know, whatever the math splits up. But uh, um, that, it, but it's not for everyone. Some people have a hard time delegating or letting go. And I'm absolutely, I, I, I without co-writing, I don't know if my own songs would be as good as you. Because mm -hmm. co-writing helps your own writing, too. Uh, you learn things from writing with other people that the next time you write a song, what would so and so think? And then you yeah. sometimes paint yourself out of a corner. Yep. And you learn there. And everybody, whether you're a novice or whether you're you've written a thousand songs, there's always something that hasn't been figured out. And you don't have to worry. Like you said, you have a song you wrote one verse that mm -hmm. could have been a song. Yeah. Uh, that one we just played. Yep. That's f that's four choruses. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even have a verse. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> it wasn't designed that way. It just happened that way. So you just don't throw any same. of those notes. Don't yeah. throw any of those. You record I've on a phone. Save home, it. Yes, I save write, it. I write in every. Save it. I uh, I keep going to the dollar store and I get a new scribbler, and I'm like, this one, I'm like, I'm gonna, I get OCD. I'm not gonna mess it up. I'm gonna write all the blah blah blah. Every week I got to go get a new scribbler, and I got a stack of them at home. Yeah. And I got you know my good songs in there, and then I've got pages of jibber jab, and uh, squiggly lines, and then uh, a list of things to do that I you know. Yeah. Leona calls I write it, everything down. Leona Berkey calls it her shoebox. Yeah. Yeah. She has a little box that she throws her. I don't know if she actually has a box that she throws things in. Yeah. But she doesn't throw it. Mm -hmm. She doesn't throw it anything. She doesn't I throw a stack every of scrap of everything she she she, she saves, yep. and it's it, it's a discipline. I've mm -hmm. I've just recently started doing that. I have yep. I have a whole bunch of recordings on my phone that are only twenty eight seconds long. But it's the root. It's the it's I've a seed the, to something. Uh, right? The idea, um, like I've got a cool uh, B flat uh, riff thing, yep. and I want to do a song called uh, "But I Can't Move On." You know. <laughs> So is it called you can't move on or you just can't move on? <laughs> but I can't move on. Yeah. yeah. Well you got time to work on it because yeah, you just, right? this album just came out. Yeah. I mean you bought yourself a little bit of time, man. You yeah. know, you can write you know, and now you got the fires lit. Yeah. Folks, how do we get the album? How do we get that? Oh. All right, this is me. Yeah. Okay. How, so, how, how uh, do we get it? Uh, if you on Facebook, there's a uh, an order form on my Facebook. We're gonna post it. Uh, I got your webs. On, if you look on the on the feed, your webs your web yes. address is there. Yep. It's uh, we're taking e transfers to Kevin Fletcher Music at gmail dot com, and okay. you just send me how much? Uh, Twenty five to have them mailed. There you go. Floating uh, postage. Are you gonna autograph them if they wish? In gold. <laughs> this has been autographed in gold, right? I don't. I don't usually accept CDs from people unless they sign it first. Yeah, yeah. That's the way. That's my. That's my. Well, my my de facto rule. You so. can take that nine of the pawn shop, and, and I'll get an extra you, fifty cents for you it. You get about fifty bucks for the gold. Yeah, right on yeah, the cover. Right on, yeah.
Uh, guess whose copy this is? It's yours, Wayne. All right. Right on. So yeah, Excellent. Thanks, fantastic. Sir. So and uh, I hope I don't I don't see that Andy's watching tonight, but uh, Andy, you're a terrific producer and a recordist, and uh, we did go down swinging. Mm -hmm. With Andy, we used Ian O'Donnell on drums, Lee yeah, Fleming so. Smith on keyboards, Craig Rude did the electric. Great, great, great. And uh, Andy on bass. I call it the Killer Blues Band. Yep. And it was a, it was a great recording. And then uh, we just did a recent. And uh, and then Craig did the overdubs, and John Campbell John did some overdubs on it. And so it turned out to be quite the guitar. So it was the song. It's like it's Maurice O'Coin going down swinging. But who's that guitar player? Because it was like mm -hmm. it was it was a real feature well, for Craig. Quite, right? quite a cast. And there. I did and I did a lot of comping to get. He, he was really happy with with the editing on his guitar because he did it like four times. Mm -hmm. And we had like four different mics on the amp. We were just we had all the stuff to play with, and he had like nice. three of his amps. And if anybody knows Craig, Craig's got like I don't know. I don't even want to know how much of their worth, but he's got so many vintage amps and yeah. like this special stuff yeah and we were we set up a mountain of gear and we had mics and room mics and ribbon mics and this that and the other thing and we were just sitting back was was parting our hair so this is good the only problem i'm thinking is like if you do more than four takes yeah it's like four four of each take i had like 16 tracks to edit right yeah. it was it, it was getting pretty complicated it was well worth it yeah but uh, yeah it was great and andy um He's got the funkiest, coolest house. That it, yeah. his whole house is a studio, yep. and he does it's an artsy of, place. And yeah. he does like what you guys do. He's, he's yep. an artist, and he does he does a lot of contracting work. And he'll he'll come home with some antique piece of furniture, yep. and he'll incorporate it into his studio. Like he got those uh, those uh, marine lights that he mm -hmm. got home. Those marine, the, the cover photo on the and album. And he's got there. and it's and now uh, so in the recording, he puts the, the red light in it. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, the guts of a piano. Yeah, no, just sitting uh, against the wall. Uh, yeah. Just the soundboard with the strings. There's only yeah. three missing strings on the yep. piano. It's amazing. Like, yep. and, and 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 he just propped it there. He's got a he's got a door, uh, or a door or a tabletop on his mm -hmm. ceiling. He's got to screw it up there, and there, and it was at it was at one of the dorms, one of the frat houses, and I don't know which one it was. I he, I can't remember now. But there's like people have carved their names on the dates, like in the turn of the century, like yeah. 1900 and stuff like that. It's like, and he just. Yep. And it drilled it into a ceiling. It's like, so you're there playing away on your guitar, and you're trying to record and do something, you know, really good. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, <laughs> you're staring at all this cool yeah. stuff, right? So, Andy, uh, you got one of the most awesome places. It's so inspiring to be in your studio. Uh, you got great tones, great sound, mm -hmm. and uh, I've had the pleasure. And then I would like to get this mentioned. I'm glad we talked about it because uh, we um, we recorded. Well, Jamie Miles passed away uh, last October. Uh, there was no. There was no funeral there was no service there was no memorial um there was no mention of it and i found that extremely sad and disheartening he's one of my best friends uh, we go back so many years uh, he's done a lot for the music community i was probably the last person i think that played the bay landing before he passed away i saw him a week earlier and uh, he wasn't looking good but uh, at any rate i didn't think he was going to die like that it was awful and the only thing that was ever mentioned about it was that at nova scotia music week they had the on the brunch uh, the uh, we had a there was a brunch the, the the awards brunch they said you know the past members that we've lost in the past and they actually brought his name up on the screen the moment of silence for all the members and I was like I was reduced to tears I said somebody thank you uh, so Dave Rockwell and myself who are both dear friends of him and the current members of the band Shaker which is the band that that he was in before he passed away we got together in Andy's studio. Mm -hmm and uh with ross yeah and we recorded two tracks so two cover tunes one is a cover of u2's um uh, with or without you and uh and, and we did a really interesting cover that dave retooled he actually made an old, a brand new original arrangement of uh well very really cool of uh waiting on a friend by the rolling stones this uh dave going and, out there for that and one? uh no we, we had so what we had that we had the the, the, the we had dave ross and uh, uh the drummer uh, we had uh, andy mm -hmm. uh we had uh willie and and danny uh, sullivan the two right. the two of them and uh, ross and then i guess we're bringing to do we haven't done the vocals yet and i know it's been seeming like forever guys i'm getting there uh i'm bringing danny out here with uh with uh with peter bayless and the three of us are going to recut all the vocals cool. and then we're going to get ross ross offered to mix it for us yeah and then we're just i don't know what we're going to do we'll try to maybe get a bit of play on the radio or something but it was just something we wanted to do in tribute for jamie uh that was his favorite rolling stone song yeah. And when he played with uh, Shaker, that was his favorite song to play with the band, and they liked doing it. So we thought it'd be kind of a neat thing to do. And we get to spend more time in Andy's studio. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I guess it's my turn to play a song now. Uh, this is another song that hasn't been put on the album. 
I don't know if it will. And the backstory to this, it's a true story. I wrote it about the summer of 17. We were all here. Uh, it was a great summer. Um, Randy lived here for that whole summer. He was after here for four years. He was my roommate, housemate. Uh, but a friend of ours, Stephen Wallace Lowe, spent the summer here. It was kind of a bachelor summer. We had fire pits on night. Uh, I think you were out here once that year yeah, in June. Yeah, we had that party, really cool big party. party here in the studio. And But it was just one day after another, like not... It seemed like it never rained. It was yeah. a sunny day every day. Uh, I, I must have burned a cord of wood <laughs> that I could have used to keep my house warm, but we sped it outside drinking by it at the fire pit, and we and we had a wonderful summer. Can you go up a half step to put you in G? Sure. Instead of G? Absolutely. G flat? Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Well, we're going to do something else, but he doesn't even know the tune. I love it, love it, love it. See, so that's a professional musician willing to stick his neck out. Oh, actually, I'm going to do something different than that. Sorry, okay. I, that, this song I don't use a capo for, sure. but I'm going to make it a standard pitch. Okay. So it's just G. Awesome. Thanks. Anyways, tune called The Summer of 17. I'm going to put on some verb here, and we'll get her going. And, oh, yeah, so anyway, uh, Chris Ritchie found the heartbeat, and uh, we're going to produce it together. I also have Sean Kilbride on the pipeline because he did the drums on, Go Down, or on uh, Bring Me Down. He won't, let any, he won't let anybody else record it. So he wants to be on the right, but he's he's doing Rock of Ages right now. He's doing Canada right now. Okay. So I already know who's playing drums on it. So <laughs> so yeah, Chris, we're we're gonna get this one due too. So anyway, it's called the Summer of Seventeen. Was the summer of seventeen? Glad to have what was left of me. I cleared the air and now we see how hot what may not could become of me. But who knows what we'll see in the summer of 17. The sky's blue and the water is clean. My name and lies behind the fire screen. Kind of hard to believe if it was real or it was just a dream. For me to be in the summer of 17. We're holy actors at the crossroads in between. Making movies with our lines already seen. If only we could be once again so free. But in the summer of 17. The leaves have all escaped the trees, uh -huh, and the music's faded with the breeze. Kinda hard to believe, uh -huh, if it was real or it was just a dream. Me, me, in summer of seventeen. Summer of 17. Uh, it was a summer of 17. Uh, it was a summer of 17. Uh, it was a summer of 17. Uh, <laughs> summer of 17. Yeah, I don't know if that'll be on the album or not, but I get so many songs like that it. probably won't be on the album, but I can release them as singles. And I think a plan down the road is because I'm fast tracking my music career here, mm -hmm. my recording career. Like I said, I mean, I, I, 
you know when you say you have regrets in life i don't regret things because regrets regret isn't something you, you can't fix regret regret yeah. is something you just got to get over it and move ahead but if there's one thing you're allowed to say when you regret something i regret that i didn't do something sooner yeah which means not because when you don't do something sooner, it means you're, you're doing something you really want to do mm. and you're never too late to, to start and by this I, I my brain just explodes at night and once again thank you leslie for putting up with this crazy dude who never goes to sleep and he's got music on the brain and she lets me do that <laughs> and it takes a very strong strong partner to let you do that because it really it's uh, it's a lot of work just to put up with that and uh, but she does and it's really affected my in a profound way in a profound way it's affected me and i and i get so many songs coming out now and so my idea is that I have some really favorites that I recorded in the previous years from from a couple of EPs from the full length Persuaders mm -hmm. albums we did, and I like to bring them back maybe on a Greatest Hits album, yeah, and with some new songs that I haven't recorded yet. So maybe my 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 second album could become a Greatest Hits album because it's really I've been involved with about five or a half dozen recording projects over my I really my like career. the stuff that you did with uh, Craig Rude, yeah, you know the bluesy stuff, and that's gonna happen. Like yeah, and, well that Papa uh, Papa better put the guitar down. The one we played earlier, he helped me rough that out. Yep. And we have a. We have Did a, you help uh, Joey King with his album? I remember the live no, stream. No, actually, no. Did. I helped. I we we put it on the roundabout. We discussed it, and uh, I played some of those songs, and I've jammed yeah. with them. And I mean, he's had a couple of those songs kicking around for years too. That's his life's work. Well, Joey, I mean? Joey and I've been uh, chatting back and forth, yeah. and uh, yeah. and Kirsten and I've been having that cranked up at home. Yeah, he. Uh, no, that's his life's work, you know. Yeah. And, and but and and that's really hard when you record one song in uh, in uh, 1996 and one song in uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. And then you got to master them and make it sound like they're like you know, yeah you, it, it, that's you know that, that's a trick and he did a good job uh, yeah uh, rob Camo actually mastered that for him he okay. did a really good job i was really impressed with that and shout out to joey joey yeah. King. love you joey yeah, right yeah. on he's playing the short club with us all oh, the short club this is all i, I got uh, 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 may the 6th we are at the short club opening up this year so uh it's a week later than it usually opens so uh, but joey will be there for that uh, cool. we have joey uh we have uh uh, Rob Francis on the drums on that one. Gary uh, Gary LeBlanc bass. Neil McKinnon's playing keyboards with us. Yep. And Germambo on saxophone. Cool. Yeah, baby. So we got a big band. We got a big nice. band for that one. We yeah. Did, yeah. 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 Oh yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yep. So come on down for that. And I'll be on. Uh, and I'm going to be on uh, 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 well, Trip Hazard. Uh, thanks, Mom. Steve Gilbert's radio show the Friday before. <laughs> And uh, we'll be on that, so uh, I'll be promoting that thing and playing some of my songs as well. So <laughs> we're all so busy and everything, right? Yes. Yeah. What do you say? Thanks, Mo. Why? Well, you just I, I, we're playing the short club, baby. <laughs> ah, well, if you're coming down, you're not getting out. You're not. You got to get on that stage. <laughs> yeah. 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 There you go. Cool. Yeah. What an excuse to get down there. Anyway. Right. We've been opening that. That's uh, a cool spot. We've been opening the short club for just about thirty years now. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the pandemic shut her down. Yep. But the last show before we did before the pandemic was our 30th anniversary show. We had two drummers. Wow. It was a seven piece band. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It was really, really cool. So, yeah. So, and gigs. Now, that's, now that we're talking about gigs, see, this is how I like to segue our evening. I'm getting, I've learned a lot from Wayne. Yeah. Nobody's smoother at it than Wayne Schneer. And like, and I'll be, and we'll be watching you on his show. And he's probably, yeah, uh, yeah, he, yeah. So he's taking notes tonight, aren't you? But look, he's nodding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Not enough. Yeah. <laughs> so gigs. Let's talk about gigs, man. All right. I got a, I got a list here of uh, special appearances. Pembroke. Yes. That's the that's the that's the place to be yeah. this summer. I was there last summer. It was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you, I w loved your set last year. No, oh, thank you very much. You saw it, yeah. Yep. Uh, we don't miss one. We're there for the uh, the Pembroke Rock, the blues. Last year, you even played the country. Oh, man, you did all three of them. Well, <laughs> I got drinking. Some of us can't get I, one, and, and he gets I, three. I eh? said, uh, yeah, hey, come on, Darcy, hire my country band. <laughs> did you have a country band? No, well, <laughs> we got Gordy Tucker to get up and play There you the go. So. You made a country band on the spot. Yeah. I, uh, Played a couple Merle Haggard I, tunes, and away you go. I right? made a pie, pelt, pie plate belt buckle. Beautiful. I borrowed a cowboy hat. Yeah, Slim it was on. Yeah, Slim Pickens. Um, yeah. Slim Pickens, he's great, isn't he? Yes, yeah. who he was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're, having, we're having lots of fun and that's good. So yeah. Pembroke, sure. Uh, yeah. So that that takes care of three festivals. Anyway, any 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 places in town or in the bars or uh, any, uh, you catch me Thursday nights at the Nook and Cranny. In Truro. Are you doing that every week now? Every, Thursday. Every Thursday. Yeah. That's not. You live in Stuyak or uh, in, in Truro. Tru you so, live in Truro now, do you? Yeah. Oh, right. In, oh, that's like. Oh, yep. that's like a walk down the street. Yeah. So it's uh, five minutes from home. Well, uh, we gotta thank. We gotta thank you from driving all the way from Truro. 
to come to the show tonight. That's nice. an hour drive right there. Uh, I got uh, Terry Jagger coming in in a, in a couple weeks, awesome. and uh, he comes from Windsor. So he, uh, I don't just I just don't get my neighbors involved, you know. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. Uh, so Nook and Cranny, is that like a, um, is it like a, just a solo kind of thing you got going yeah, on? Yes, every yeah. Thursday night they've got their own yeah. system, so it's uh, tends to be really busy for like a supper crowd. They get nice food. And, right on, uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, I do a uh, six to nine during the winter, and then summertime. You must, I switch and I play till ten or so. I take it th so long. Thursdays. You don't you you don't pull a long day on I, Thursdays. I, uh, job. You or to... Friday. Or Friday. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on how you look on it. Sometimes Thursday is a very long day. So I take it you work some Sundays to make up for it? Yeah. 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 There's, you know, Thursdays we yeah. go overtime, so, you know. Right on, yeah. Uh, it must be, I don't know, I, I admire you for being able to do that. I try to keep it up, because uh, uh, Craig's hired me a couple of times when he was yeah. short short a pair of hands. I didn't, you know, he didn't get me to build anything. Well, he just got me to hold the other end of something, you know. But but still, I'd go home dragging my butt, right? You yeah. know, and, and he, he was, you know, we're, he had a gig that night. He didn't, you know, he... Yeah, and uh, he's just doesn't never stops. He's just crazy, and uh, he yep. he's busy. And he, he does great work. I mean, you guys, I saw you guys do mm -hmm. some marvelous work together. I learned uh, a lot from working with Craig. Well, you know what? It's like you know, you're an artist, you're a musician, mm -hmm. but when you're building things, you're also an artisan. He, you know, and you look at the, that with the same kind of pride as the CD. The like, there, the, that, I created uh, this in my CD, and then you look at a beautiful kitchen or yeah. a, a beautiful house or something like that. So I built that house. It's the same kind of pride. A big know. gift that Craig gave me was the, the confidence to figure it out. So yeah. uh, he's got some windows and he said, Kevin, why don't you want to put those basement windows in? Mm -hmm. And I come back to him like, well, man, they're, they don't fit. He's well, get, go get the jackhammer and smash the concrete out. Like, look at, yeah, figure it out, figure it you out. know, and yeah. he was always there to help me. But uh, you know what's really cool about Craig too? He, he believes you could do it. Yeah. You know, and he he nurtured the uh, the confidence in me that I could figure it out for myself. Yeah. And, and I didn't have that until Craig really helped me with it. He's also really good at, at being humble in that respect. He um, yeah. uh, he he had the blues. You know, he yeah. had, he'll tell you all, the, and he's not he's not ashamed to talk about his past. Yeah. Uh, you know, working with all those years with Dutchie, you know, you've been yeah. down, you went down some wrong turns somewhere. Well, and uh, but he but you go you'll see him and he'll. Uh, He's he's always willing to accept the fact he's got to figure it out because there's no way you can know everything. Every time you do a job, you, you come across something you never saw before. And he said, no matter how many years you've been doing something, you always come in the recording industry. It's the same thing. Uh, you know, some about, of the uh, best, like you, you'll get a guy like uh, you know a, a Jeff Lynn, for example, yeah. my, my idol of a producer, right? Yeah. And every time he takes on another project, he takes on a lot of projects. Well, I never did that before. And, Craig, and, uh, yeah. give me a job too when uh i wasn't doing so great and uh he was there to help me when i needed it right. and uh i remember the day uh he come to pick me up and i was standing there waiting for him with a beer bottle in my hand when he come to pick me up for work in the morning he took me to tim hortons and he took me back home really yeah, yeah and, I, and uh it hurt that day but he held me accountable yeah and uh yeah set, you know set the standard he, he taught me a lot and you know what he's he been did, a really good friend i learned and he, a lot and from he, him and he did it with he did it with a like a with a soft touch you but know what it, mean? Yeah, yeah he yeah, uh yeah, he yeah. he's yeah. he got a lot of life experience yeah, he's and really he's, cool. he's and helped me very much what's amazing is i i consider him as one of the best look i mean you're a great player don't get me mm -hmm. wrong but i consider craig to be one of the one of the oh, top, no. top tier guys around yeah. uh, he won't but he won't admit it and he still takes lessons yeah well, that's Ken, da uh, Ken Davidson. He he went back to Ken Davidson. He still. I said. I said, man. I said, you're. I said, he can still teach you stuff. And he yeah. gave me this look, like, what the hell? What, what the dumbest thing you could have said? Yeah. Of course, he can teach you something. Yeah. You know, like that's what and, we love about playing guitar. You, you know, there's yeah. and music. There's yeah. There's, it's, it's like there's only what nine notes. Yeah. It, you know, I don't know, Craig. He's got. He, but it's. He uh, got, a, he got an extra well, it's like on he, his how many guitar. was uh, six forty nine? So what's that? How many numbers is there? Six numbers, the six numbers, but the combination of six numbers, whatever. I don't know how the math works. Yeah. So, but you take those nine notes and you can write. You yeah. know, they're still coming up with new songs. Yeah, yeah. So, I'm doing yeah. good with the three chords I got. Yeah, so that's right. You know, yeah. and you, I'm, I'm still running my. And you got all ten fingers yeah, right? still to do it, right? You there know? you go. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have to wrap this up soon. We've been on over an hour, and it's been a really good night. We got a great man. What a look at the look at the pile thing, man. Look. Uh, right on, uh, Tim. Thanks for tuning in yourself, dude. And once again, folks, I'm gonna let you know about Tim Feswick while I got him here. Um, I, it's, uh, well, um, uh, just the fact that we got working together, there's a big backstory and I'll say that for another conversation. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to say is that although he lives in Mexico, Fuatuco, Mexico, 
And uh, actually, he crashed his e-bike. He's kind of limping. He's hop he's hobbling around there a little bit right now, and uh, he's healing slowly. And he's in a bit of pain, but he he's just the studio keeps his mind going. He's active and he's really busy. And the fact that he lives in Mexico, and he has people from all over the world literally flying down to do little projects with him. Because first of all, it's a resort town to begin yeah. with. But the fact is, he's good enough that people are willing to go through all that expense. And but he's also so brilliant. And he's he's like Craig. Um, he knew that I never had a producer before, so he knew that he had to educate me in a nice. He's got a gentle touch, yeah. And he made me, he very, very, very delicately told me, "Stop, listen to your producer." Yeah. And he guided me just like way Craig guided you. And I'll, yep. I'll always. Uh, Tim and I have been have become really good friends in this short period of time in this project. And all I can tell you is that he's a pleasure to work with. Give him his room. Yep. Let him use his imagination on your music. Don't get, just open your mind he always yeah. tells me he'll give me the copy of the master of the other he'll say listen just and, and don't listen to it on your phone he says we'll get a nice set of headphones he says keep an open mind mm -hmm. just keep an open mind and listen to it and uh uh he's astounding and if any and if anybody is looking for a producer with somebody who uh, and his prices are reasonable you are you'll work you'll work out a deal with them mm -hmm. uh, we work out a fair arrangement and um and and, the, and, he, and he's in an area of mexico which just i guess there's a heck of a music scene where he's at um, somebody I was talking to a message they said they'd worked with them or they had done something in Mexico and they said that's just a very robust uh, we had no problem finding a whole mariachi band for one of my songs mm -hmm. they were playing in the courtyard in front of his apartment he went down and talked to him he said well I'm doing a jazz festival right now but I'll come over and like so it's a great he's he's a wonderful producer he does great work um, if you want to go to Mexico and have a work vacation look him up he's easy to find on Facebook go through me go to my Facebook you'll see him uh, I can't. I can't speak highly. I, I, there's, I just. That's. That's. I just scratched the surface. He's. He's, he's wonderful. The album's going to be great. I'm very proud of, of. Of working with him, and I'm glad he watched the show tonight. He said it was great. Um, what you got? Any, uh, I know this album just came out. When was the release date? How long ago did this come out? Uh, a week ago. I think it was April first. April first. Yes. So yeah, it's only been out like for a little over a week. Yeah. Um, do you already have tunes set aside for another album? Did you have yes. lots left? Do so you have some yes. left over? Yeah. And, uh, any any co-writing, any uh, any work, any collaborating no. coming up yet? No. Nope. Um, oh, so you're a busy man, just Chris, in your own head. Chris has uh, been a sounding board, you know. Uh, helping well, then you're a collaborator. With, with you're, you're, yeah, you're a collaborator. You know, she's an editor and Absolutely. supporter. And do you help him with his know. online presence? Oh, and like his, uh, that, yeah. It takes a team. I yeah. I'm overwhelmed by it. I'm looking for a publicist soon when the album comes out. Yeah. I'm also I need a web designer. I, yeah. I I'm just I, I can't do it all. Earlier today she yeah. said uh, no online activity. You know she uh, she'll handle she'll she'll, she'll look at yeah. that. Wayne's making notes here for yeah. us. Pass what do you got there? You yeah. <laughs> hey hey hey. Huh? Right. Yeah. Cool. Um. Well, I, I think we should. We, well, let's listen to another track off the record. Cool. What, what do you want to hear? Uh, Stone Mine or Hey 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 or Hey Hey. Chris is saying Hey Hey Hey. That's the first track. Track number one. Track number one. Track number one. Folks, uh, we're going to come back and close the show, but we want you to listen to this song. Uh, it's uh, Kevin Fletcher's from the from. How do you, it looks like Sade, but I guess Sadie's Sadie's uh, Sadie's Place Studio, which is a picture of Andy Lambert's uh, uh, awesome facility. And if you're looking for a studio, man, there's yeah, you can't go wrong working with Andy. He's the most awesome human being i've known in how, in how many years okay so track one we're going to go with and uh, enjoy yeah <laughs>
was awesome man yeah we were just talking about uh while your song was playing uh about your about your your home studio yeah so you got you have a full gar- like, we're in a garage here i mean i mean don't take your shoes off whatever you do but it'll never have a car in it. yeah Obviously, our garage you, you take your shoes off you take your clothes oh off, man no it looks like <laughs> i was just saying it looks you like know? an after hours bar it, is. it looks like yeah man yeah and uh yeah you just finished that in the last few months so you plan on having some house concerts yes uh we've got a, a list of people that we want to have up wayne's I, been there last i hope uh, you get me on that list i'd love to do a show yeah. list. last uh, uh summer we had a uh a may long weekend uh wow. you know a weekend party yeah, basically that's and fantastic. Uh, wayne and a bunch of friends come how many with, people will it sit if it's a proper like you know because you're uh, like we we had as a house concert we had about 30 that's a good number that's, a, about, that's a nice room yeah we had about 30 people nice for room. the weekend yeah uh last may yeah. and everybody camped out we had people nice. sleeping on couches and beds yeah. and on top of each other. And, That's how it starts. You have 300, uh, then you'll, you'll have 300 in a few years. Wayne ago. and some of them, I don't think they yeah. slept, uh, you know. No, not But we, uh, not with the people that were there hanging out, we uh, hanging out during the afternoon. We put some songs together, yeah. and uh, Wayne picked a couple tunes. So uh, I played bass. We had Dale Schimpf playing guitar. That's we had cool. a couple of the girls playing shakers and on the box. and Yeah. That's fantastic. So we want to have you up. 
And oh, uh, uh, you don't have to ask me twice. We're gonna do some house concerts. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, I mean, I don't. I, I think we just about covered it all tonight, man. Mm -hmm. That's been a, the hour went by. We're probably just over, and it doesn't matter. We can go for three hours sometimes. Yeah. But uh, this was awesome. Your album's great, man. Thank, I, thank I mean, you so much I mean, for all your the, uh, great band, all your help and support over the years, man. No problem, man. You've no. been a, a big, I remember big the brother first music. time I saw you play, and nice. here we are, yeah. right there, folks. And uh, you know, and you're 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 you know you're well into the music scene here now. Uh, are you going to Nova Scotia Music Week? Have you made plans to go to that? Uh, I just became, uh, this is my first time yep. being a member. Yep. Um, but I'm going to submit this for, for yeah, whatever, yeah, you know. Yeah. And uh, But even if you don't get a showcase, go down anyway. And oh, just yeah. network. I went, yeah. I, I, went to, uh, I went to Sydney on behalf of the radio station. Uh, I saw the videos you put up uh, yeah, driving did, in the car last yeah, year. Yeah, I did a bunch of uh, I did a bunch of interviews. I never got to use them yet on the show, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll get to, they're not going to go to waste. Mm -hmm. But I, I went on a, I went on a media uh, on a media yeah. badge. And and there was very few of us. There was only about two guys. I only ever saw one other person in the entire conference that had a media badge. Where is it this but, year? But it's in Yarmouth. It's back in okay. Yarmouth. Well, maybe we'll but, go together. But what Oh yeah, but what I'm saying is that whether you i didn't have a showcase we made a little we actually had a showcase we made our own showcase out of town we raised money for the red cross it was fun to do but i found within within all the festivities uh there was lots to learn there was yeah. lots of networking a lot of elbows to rub uh you know you're going to hand out some cds to some some people some important people mm -hmm. uh you're just going to like reconnect some people that you haven't seen in a while and you're going to just going to talk shop like we do here yeah and it's the most uh you know and you know, uh, you got to go. You got to start doing that. Well, plus you're in the scene. You know, yeah. you're not just out there playing songs for the sake of it. You mm -hmm. actually got something to promote. It's and a great album, folks. Yeah. I, I, it's and awesome. Th and thanks, to, you know, to the uh, the support of the musicians yeah. in our community yeah. that got behind me to help me have yeah. that. You know, that that was a team. And you, you know, and, uh, uh, I had a lot of. There I've had a lot of help to make that possible, and yeah. it's uh, it's wonderful. I'm, I'm really proud of it. You should be, so, man. You should be. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Thank it's been you. a really good night tonight, folks. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, the roundabout. Uh, I think the 23rd, whatever, if that's if that's a Monday, whatever night that is, later in the month, uh, Terry Jagger's coming on. He's coming out from Windsor. Uh, a bit of re a reunion. We yeah. haven't played together. And, and we, had, we used to be in a band 40 years ago. And we'll be hashing with some old stories and uh, doing that. And he's got a couple new tunes of his own out. And he's busy yeah. as hell these days, too. And so I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, well, I scratched this one off the list. I've been trying to get you hooked up for this, and then I said the album came out. Well, now he's definitely coming on. You're not getting yeah. away. All right. So, folks, thank you. Have a great evening. Uh, enjoy yourselves, and uh, peace out. Hey, everybody. And we'll see you all uh, next time. I'm gonna put on some music while we're fading out here, and we'll go track. Uh, just we're just gonna take a random track, whatever whatever number eight is. There you go. <laughs> good night, folks. Have a good one. Same. Now 
I can do to take it away. Just one more thing I can't change. Your love got me stoned and blind. I'm gonna lose my mind. We all got knees, feelings of size. I'm not the only one. Do I got me stoned and blind? Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you all next show.